Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Camille, and uh, uh, I'm basically here to show you a similarity, which is nothing more than what you do in a studio as well as what you do live. I'm sure everybody wants to cut records as well as play the same thing live. How many of you want to do that? One, just one person. Anybody else? Two. That's it. Three, four. Okay. Five. Good. So, uh, how many of you have actually played live, either here or anywhere else? Great. So, what's your and, and have you recorded the same song or voice or whatever it may be? Yeah. What's your experience? Okay. Okay. Okay, my question is now what you actually record in the studio, can you reproduce the same thing live? Yeah, I guess to a certain extent. Anybody else has an answer for that? I don't think so. Why? Because there are other two limitations when you're doing stuff live. You're right. The venue. Right. Second point. Anybody else? See, there's one thing that you have to realize. I say this quite often. If anybody can point out one other than my students, uh, what's the stark difference in playing a record and playing live? What's Starkest difference of playing a record, either on a CD or a USB, and playing the same set live, post sound check. There's one difference. That's to do with acoustics of the room. Yeah. That is not so important because when you do, as a sound engineer, you will take care to see that you're catering to 5,000 people or five people, exactly. irrespective. That's an important factor because in the similarity, we'll come to that in a minute. Anybody else? You'll be shocked what I'm going to say. Nobody. On every player in the world, including USB players, you have a pause button. You don't have that one once you go live. Okay. Now, uh, the, what most people make a mistake in believing, as you just said, that you cannot reproduce the same thing live. You can. Provided if you're using the same guitar, you're using the same uh, processors, or you're going uh, a completely different guitar or a completely different drum kit. As a drummer, you need to know to tune your drum kit to what the sound of the song or the key of the song may be. Uh, the most important factor is gain structure, which nobody pays attention to. Maybe the engineer will, but God forbid your engineer can't travel with you. What do you do? Are you going to rely on the engineer that knows his stuff or doesn't know his stuff? Always assume the worst. You get the best. Now, I'd like to do it. Who, who can play guitar yeah, other than the one who's supposed to play with me? I'll do a simple example. Come. I want this to be more interactive, so if anybody else wants to come and join while he's playing guitar in terms of vocals or play, play the drums, I think that's what he's going to set up right now. Now what we're going to do in this exercise is, Tushar is sitting up there, the console is going to do a basic sound check before he actually gets to play live. The same, the same signal is going to be recorded from a live perspective. We'll then hear that back. He played the same riff for another riff, which is then recorded only to tape. Not monitored over here. We see the difference. Tushar, please. You want me to come there? Keep playing. Are we recording this? Great. So play like a 16 bar riff, then we'll hear it back.
Tushar, what you've done is basically gain structure on the PA and that you've recorded, right? So just play the recorded track back. Let's hear, let's everybody hear it. Or wait, keep the PA off. Uh, let him play the same riff and record it later, where you get a good level on your Pro Tools. Right now, I'm sure it's not loud enough. So please get a hot level for you. Let me do a comparison. Please don't, mo please don't monitor that return. Don't monitor that return yet. Yeah, just play the first one and then the second one, back to back. Put the input off. This is the first one, right? Just skip to the second one. Now, the gain structure that you have for the second one, if we decide to use it for live, what's the first thing you're going to get? What's the difference in, in levels between the two, at least 10 dB? Yeah. We all know that the moment you increase even 3 dB is going to make a difference in any aspect. If you use that live, you're going to get feedback in the house as well as on monitors. But what's important is, in a studio, we all assume that the same thing can be reproduced live. That's what the play, because you have processors, you have tons of gear that you can use in the studio. Unless you're traveling with the same gear, you can't reproduce, reproduce exactly the same sound. But if you're using the same guitar, you definitely can get the same tone. Okay. Now, any console that you use, the higher end and the mid-range consoles, can give you a decent amount of gain structure and translation of tone. What you hear here is a stark difference. Now, if he even brings up the fader, on the input signal and tries to monitor what he was monitoring when he was playing earlier and now he's going to have to duck it much more. That's one stark difference about the reproduction of records to be played actually live. The belief that we cannot play the same thing live, there's so many artists today, you pick a name and they're doing minus ones, they're doing uh, tracks along with the whole live act. That's because certain elements certain post-production elements cannot be reproduced live from the perspective that you have so many microphones. Today we are living in an era of your, you guys are lucky to have an era of something called in-ear monitoring, which eliminates stage nastiness, which eliminates the first danger called feedback. Uh, the, the other similarity which we all uh, are very well aware of, if you've been to a club with great visuals and, and there's live visuals being fed back, You'll notice sometimes there's anomalies that we say, wow, there's a great video effect. The same thing can be done in audio if smartly used. But uh, reproducing feedback in a creative aspect, very few people know how to do it. Or if it's rehearsed, then you know what to do with that. Otherwise, it's a no. Another thing what we don't have here are preamps. So you put the same thing through a manly. Or even if you, right now it's going through a DI, right? Yeah. Can you just switch it directly to the console? Knock off the DI. Can you do that? 
No. Okay, so we can't. Another thing is uh, uh, isolation. Who's going to play drums for me? Please. You guys figure out the part that you want to jam. Just do a jam. We'll do the same process of recording at different gain structures. Yeah, sorry. That's exactly what... Another thing, what a lot of people fail to do is share that knowledge. Like if you know you're going to a venue to mix and the engineer has no idea what your production is, you will send some tracks forward saying, listen to my track, this is the tonality and, and the mix aspect that I want to be reproduced. If you're lucky, here in the age of digital, you have plugins. So if you're using uh, like your Avid products and stuff like that, you can, even, even Digico, you can reproduce those post-production effects. What you cannot reproduce is the preamp stage that you might use in your chain. Unless it's traveling with you on your on your gigs, which is a tough call. Now, uh, there is, for as far as I know, in India, there is one act that travels with all the hardware gear, Arijit Singh. He's using everything that he uses in the studio is used live. That's how it sounds exactly the same live as it is in the studio. So, if you have everything that is used in the chain, yes, you can have the same thing live. But even Arijit's recordings, when you hear them, the gain structures, the productions that are dynamically different from studio recordings. It will always be different. But what you can always take across is the translation that yes, I can reproduce what I love creating in the studio and take it live. Because you have all that available. What we're now going to try and understand is leakage and isolation. Now, a uh, lot of, I've had this in the past where people have complained about, man, the drums are leaking into everything else. Yes, it's going to leak. You don't have baffles. You want isolation, you need to have, first thing you need to have baffles for the drum kit and the percussions. We all know that what, what baffles do. So that's a great thing. Just uh, last week I was said, man, you should put a baffle for the drum kit so that the snare doesn't leak into the piano. I was like, yeah, I know, but then there's another thing called budget. Budget plays a big role in a lot of our productions that we do, even as beginners and as, as high-end professionals that are working. You might have a tech writer that has everything mentioned, but you'll go to a city where you don't have anything available. How do you work then? It's my gear that I have, which I'm going to use to re reproduce the stuff that I have created. I've had this one experience in Bhopal where I'd gone. There was absolutely no backline. No guitar amps, no bass amps. All that was there was musicians' instrument. Even the drum kit was not there. Luckily, I reached at 11 in the morning, and by around 3 o'clock, the drum kit was in, but backline never came. So everything was done just on monitors. So those kind of situations also you'll face in life. That's, that's the fear of live sound, but it's also the challenge. Chalo, go for it. Are we recording? Thank you. Any vocalist? Come. Which mic, Tushar? So now notice one very important thing from a live sound aspect. The singer is standing right next to the drum kit. 
What is the biggest nightmare? Leakage, yeah, that's going to be the irrespective. There's no baffle, so yeah, we're going to have leakage. But he's going to keep complaining, saying, I can't hear myself. He's playing soft now, but if he goes all out playing, he's going to have his ears damaged. At the same time, he's going to say, I can't hear myself. That's the biggest difference in having monitors and in ear monitoring. But that close to a drum kit without a baffle, all the best. Anyway, we have to have fun. So people want to join in, ask questions, please ask. I'm going to throw the floor open after this, and we'll, we'll take it from there. Same thing, anything, everything. Go for it. <laughs> it's called making music. Thanks. Uh, how difficult was it considering? I have a question for you. Since you were right next to the drum kit, the all you could hear was uh, was the guitar clear enough for you? Yeah, because of this. Okay. And uh, uh, no, I, 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 since it, it was very mellow, can you do a little more heavier? Yeah. There's, there's two exercises here for that reason. Okay. okay? You, uh, <laughs> what do you understand? What you will understand is. The dynamics of each person as, as a singer as well as a musician himself. And we'll also then look at just the voice track when he plays back, the various kind of leakages you're going to have. Now it's acoustic, so you're not going to hear much of the guitar, but how the drums can be a problem, at the same time it's not. Without that, you can't have a groove. One sec, guys, one sec. The approach to mixing uh, any act, be it a metal act, which I was there last night at Blue Frog, or a jazz act, which I was, which I've done not so long back, it's never about what the musician is using. The, without, I will, another thing I always believe is, without the musicians, we engineers are not needed. Anybody who's an engineer would believe that. Okay, so if I have, say, a Stratocaster as a guitar, or I have a Fender. Uh, Fender bass, or uh, what's what's the other? What's the simplest version of a bass kit? Are you? We would buy as a starter, if you can't afford a Fender. You buy an, uh, you buy a Squire. Yeah. That's the most basic you can buy. Now playing a Squire bass in in in, even if you're recording with that or you're playing it at a gig, you and I both know that that translation versus a Fender bass, as we all say in Hindi, zameen asman ka farak. But it's how the musician uses it to his advantage. I'd ask for one more guitar. Thomas, is that available? Yeah. Acoustic. Tushar knows, he'll tell you. Acoustic guitar. Tushar. The second acoustic guitar. Second acoustic guitar, I'd ask you. Anyway, let's uh, just get the second acoustic guitar, I'd ask. Is it there or not there? You're not supposed to say that loud. <laughs> okay. So anyway, let's do this uh, little more rockish approach. 
or one more thing we can do which amp is uh, can be used one sec we will create more noise you are going to get a second guitar go for it acoustic acoustic let's take acoustic uh, i forgot your name sir Ashish, just mute his acoustic, plug it to the Fender. We'll create more noise, no? Yeah. Tushar, yeah. Uh, mute acoustic. <laughs> Is it on? Carry. Put it. First, put it in. It's not on. Play. So we have more noise. I'm sorry to make it sound so crude, but it's not exactly noise, it's music. Let's have fun, guys. Now tell me how easy it was for you to sing. How easy was it for you to sing? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now you know, you see that? <laughs> this is exactly what happens when you are not... No, that's fine. See, it, it's happening on a spur. You haven't rehearsed, so that's expected. But even if you knew the song, would you be able to come bang on time and hear yourself comfortably? Why? Whom do you blame first? Exactly. Mic nahi chal raha, which I thought when I started singing. Yeah. Maybe it's not working. Okay. That's the first opinion I have. So the lesson learned here is first thing, get your instruments checked. Who all of there for the last TSM showcase? I'm assuming all of you all. Numinous. He was playing lead and you couldn't hear it. You know why? Does anybody know why the, what the real problem was? Yeah. No, his instrument was on. The amp was off. His amp volume was off. No, the Marshall. The Fender was fine. So the most important lesson here is check your own gear even before you start the first damn song. Because it could be the best song you've written and it could go down to the drain. Do we want that to happen? No. Now he's walked in and picked up his guitar and played. Do the same thing with this guitar. We all now know that this is a bad pickup. You'll see how the whole thing goes for a full toss. Take it off. The price we pay for not paying attention to our own instruments.
Is this really a bad pickup? <laughs> okay. Go for it. Cool. You guys can take a break. Uh, two things we do. We'll just monitor the vocals of the soft version as well as the louder song. What we'll see is how leakage plays a damaging role on a recording. There's also a way how to work with it. Because when you take a recording, a live recording home, which most of us do, it's either a two-track or a multi-track. If you're lucky to get a multi-track, this is exactly what you'll hear. It's not that you can't reproduce it because you've got it, you can, then you've taken it to the studio. You can try and replace parts, which most people will do. But how do you reproduce the same thing to sound live? We'll hear the difference about the first vocal part and the second vocal part. Then we'll hear the two guitars. Obviously, it wasn't obvious on the, in the live section, but on the recording, you'll actually hear the two pickups sounding. I mean, to me, it also sounded bad. There was a tonal change, muddy, in the second one. Correct? Play, play, play. Play the vocals first. Yeah, solo it. Just play like a phrase and then play the same thing with everything. To know the difference. Relax. Relax. What are you playing? This is only the vocals. You bring in the rest of the band. Run solo. Play the first one. Do the same same one. Play it solo and then bring in the band. Start with the first part solo and then yeah. You notice you hear hardly any leakage in this? Versus the first, this, the second one we heard. Bring in the whole band. So coming to your point. So coming to your point of can you reproduce the same thing live? Yes, you can. If you have all the gear that you use in the studio. In today's age, it's all done in the box. But uh, yes, outboard gear plays a big role into tone, quality so on and so forth. Miking also plays a big deal. The same mic you change it to uh, the Neumann. He'll sound a world of a difference. And so will the recording. Now, I think you guys, you want to do anything else just for fun? Anybody else wants to come and try something? To prove me wrong? No, I, I, am, I am throwing it open for challenge. I want to see where I go, where I have gone wrong. And basically to share experiences and make you realize that recording as much as we believe needs a lot more hard work, so does life. 
if you don't do your homework like he used to come and play the guitar believe that he has a good guitar to play with in the first case it was can we hear the guitar part the two options sorry first one Play the same phrase in the second guitar or relatively same phrase. Thank you, gentlemen. So this is where the important factor comes into trust your own gear, trust yourself. which most of us no matter how well accomplished or how early we start in our career tend to doubt ourselves when you doubt yourself you short change yourself to perform at 100% whether it be a recording or be a live performance both is a performance in itself the difference is in a live environment once you playing to an audience you can't redo the song unless there's a technical fault if you've committed errors in going off key playing the wrong note is done versus in a studio i can say hey, man aur ek tick lete hai chal that's the advantage of studio now i think we're done with boys thanks but thank you very much let's have a round of applause for these guys brave enough to come and play questions queries thoughts yes i agree See what most drummers do, the best and the worst. And I'm sorry, not the worst, but the best. And in the even the beginners, beginners don't do it initially. But the best of drummers, two things they'll carry. Actually, three things: a set of sticks, a set of cymbals, and a snare at least. Because the rest, everything can be tuned to your desire or closest to what you think you want it to be. uh be very sure that the specifications you mention in a rider be it for a recording or whatever you're going for that this is the specification and if it hasn't been shared with you in in advance then you stand a right to put down your foot and say i'd ask for so and so i haven't got it that's the first thing to do have the details in your rider as for the point of you not having your engineer you need to know your sound uh the most important factor that plays at that point in time is uh do i really have the microphones i had used in the recording chances are no you have good set of microphones that you can use in the live environment to reproduce so also know what microphones are provided you will know if you've used the whole audio if you have an audix kit versus what you've used say you've used the uh, bay dynamics and you've used noimans and all that in in the studio you know that an audix and a sni is a then there's a levit a kit of levit these will relatively give you the same similar tone of what you've recorded in the studio but you need to know your sound you need to know to tune your instrument even drums need tuning i've seen drummers come and play who don't know how to tune a simple snare and will say the drum kit sucks flip side the next band playing is a seasoned drummer who before even starts to play will retune whatever a few minor changes here and they introduce the kick drum and then that shitty kit sounds like god you know so you need to know your sound you need to know how to tune stuff once you're home with that you can play anywhere in the world you'll manage to get even if you get like a mapex beginners kit or even a damaged broken drum kit i've seen this where this the the feet don't stay together they keep slipping off you will manage to get a decent sound that's not in your control i'm sorry that's not in your control uh we engineers are also called sound walas in this country and we'll always be called called sound walas i think for the next few generations to come it's you guys who are the new generation that are creating waves in the industry then and will make changes in the future 
the technology that was available to us 10 years, 15 years ago is not the same today. You have a lot more options available to you. Uh, so I'll give you a simple example. Uh, I was doing a briefing a couple of years ago uh, after a training that was given for two hours. I went for a meeting and I came back after two hours. They had all that the three boys had to do was set up the kit, my kit, and get a decent drum sound. This was at Blue Shock, Bombay. Two hours later, they hadn't managed to set the microphones. Fine. They got retrained, everything, all that. What pissed me off, and I also felt sad at the same point in time, one of the guys turned around and said, you expect me to go to Google and Google what I don't know? I said, be thankful that you have Google to give you the information through Wikipedia and a million other options. I said, back in the day, I said, if this was 93, getting into a library, you needed a membership. And the chances, even if you had membership, the books you needed to find would not be there on the shelf. So technology is available. Information is available at the drop of a hat. You can now do it on your phones. You don't need a computer either. So yeah, the key is know your sound, work on your sound, perfect it every day. And then it doesn't matter where you play. You just play in a small club in LA or play it in Blue Frog in the next three days if you manage to, or if you are guesting with somebody, or even a Cafe Zoe, or you play at somewhere in Andheri or for that matter in Virar, you will get the sound you want. Even on a shitty PA. It's how you manage to translate your creativity to sound as good as you want it to be on the record. Because even that's going to get recorded and you will have it as, as, as a show file that you want to show it to somebody down the line. Or at least as, okay, that's my bank, that's the work I don't want to showcase. We all go through that phase where, okay, I don't want to play this. You play to somebody and then somebody will say, hey man, that's damn good, where do you play this, when was this, what record, which song. So that's what happens. You never know when things turn around in your favor. And you'll be happy. We're never happy. I mean, I'm never happy with the stuff that I somehow sometimes come out and you'll still get people saying, man, that sounded great or that was a great tone and so on and so forth. So as you're saying, be careful with what you do. Be careful to carry the right gear. If you're playing jazz, don't carry don't forget to carry your brush, your brush, your brush sticks. If you're playing metal, see that you have at least four pairs of sticks. <laughs> <laughs> so on and so forth. Any more questions? I'm surprised. No, there should be more questions. Come on. Adi, you'll have some questions. <laughs> then when? Yes. Yes, I can. Uh, on your phone, you have a volume control. Yeah. That's the gain structure on a microphone, which you just use to sing. Yes, for layman's storm, yes, it is as simple as volume. My volume, mera volume, but I'll increase my volume. It's basically asking the engineer to crank up your volume from his end so that you can hear yourself on the PA and the monitor as well. Like if I'm going to talk this soft he's going to increase it louder. Same way, if you can't hear yourself, you're going to say, Sir, mera volume. If you're not, since you're a non-technical person, that's the first thing you'll say, increase the volume. That's exactly what gain structure is in layman terms. Exactly. That's exactly what gain does. When I say increase the gain, increase the volume, it's increasing the, increasing the sensitivity, sensitivity of either the preamp or the amplifier, or the microphone, depending on what you're using where. At home, it's probably a, a cassette deck or a tape deck. On your phone, it's your volume control for your music, or an iTunes, whatever. On a console, it's, a, it's your volume knob or your gain knob. So I can just, just can we have that, can just take this volume to infinity and bring it back up. While I continue talking, you'll actually hear the difference. Now this is louder, so which means the gain structure is made louder. Now, if I walk like this in front of the PA, the chances are that you're going to get feedback. Take it down. Now, now is where you can't hear me. So as he gently brings up the gain, that's what, it's basically volume, increasing volume. The difference is that on a console like that and the bigger consoles, there is no volume knob. You have a master fader, you have multiple inputs, and there's a gain structure, there's EQ, there's dynamics in terms of compression. 
Yeah. You want to just see one? Yeah. Come. Tushar. Sorry. <laughs> so this is one chart. You said game structure. Is it which? This is the mic. This is that? Yeah. And this is on zero right now. Talk. So that's the only one. That's the only one. Now why don't you take this up? You'll see the change. That's the only one. That's the only one. That's the only one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's something we don't want ever for so any life show. That's the only one. Yeah, that's your gain structure. That that's the norm. What yeah. are the rest of the? Basically, this whole panel is for gain structure. Now I can change it. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> huh, so that's that's part two. <laughs> so that's basically what gain structure does to volume control. More questions. It can't be that simple, guys. Come on. I mean, it is simple, but that means you guys are sorted. No, you're not. Yeah. Oh, one thing is I need to know the frequency response from monitor as well as the PA. If it's the same brand, the tonality will be the same, but depending on the driver. This is a 10-inch driver. That's a 12-inch driver. So what I hear from that versus what I hear from you is definitely going to be different. Tonally, it will be the same, but volume will be, the, will be different. So if I want to get a certain amount of power, this can only deliver up to what, 120 decibels. Anything louder is going to go into distortion. Automatically, there's a clip LED at the back, and it starts lighting up. Then again, the same monitor has two modes, so does the main PA. It has a monitor mode as well as a, a FOH mode. In monitor mode, my gain structures need to be very careful what I drive into it because if it's kept hot, I'm going to blow the monitor and the driver. But there are various, I mean, that's another whole school of discussing how things should be done, should not be done. But yes, you need to have clarity in exactly as he said when he disappeared. Uh, you need to know your instrument, you need to tune your instrument. Uh, the engineer needs to know the sound of what the band's all about. Now, you need to share that information if you're going without your own engineer. In today's day, people travel with the engineer, so they're not really worried about how they're going to sound. They're more worried about whether they'll get the gear that they want. So that's the thing. That's a nice question. When I'm actually doing that now, there are two phases, or two stages to mixing. One is monitor mix and one is front of house. If I'm doing both, which means if there are six musicians, then I'm doing six musicians plus the audience. Some each one's personal engineer. Uh, if I'm traveling with the band regularly, I will know exactly what to do for each musician. So in today's day, you have show files. You can travel, so you have the previous show file. Take it to the next venue. And as somebody just said, acoustics matter. So the dynamics of that acoustic will play in, which will affect your gain structure. So you might tweak the gain structure or retune the mix for, for the drummer, for the guitar player, for the vocalist. Uh, another thing what you always do is you tune the monitor to see that it's as flat as possible. Why we do that? So that we are all re first recording in a studio. We are all used to, hopefully used to hearing flat monitoring in a studio. So if that can be replicated, it doesn't matter what brand of monitor you have, then you know that, okay, relatively flat, but it's me, this color hai. For example, it's got a 200 hertz bump. I know. But it's relatively tuned flat. Have you checked it? Has your engineer checked it? Very important. So that when he's dialing in stuff for you, he knows how it's going to sound to you. So there's a certain amount of homework an engineer does before an actual show or even before the band comes to the venue. That's the reason why an engineer will always go an hour before. One is to see if the setup that he's asked for is there actually in place to tune monitors, to see that the patching shared for by the band is as it's supposed to be. 50% of the time it's never done. It's never done. You're actually doing it during your time of sound check. So you're losing time over there. 
that's the most important thing you do how do you do it in terms of uh it's as like if you're mixing your own song and if you're doing monitors you're mixing for the guitar player his individual mix how he wants to sound so basically the perspective changes from the guitar player's perspective to the bass player to the percussionist to the drummer to the vocalist the vocalist always want his voice louder the guitarist will want his vo- might want the voice louder and not the guitar loud because he got an amp if he doesn't have an amp he's only running di he'll want them at par these briefs will happen to you before sound check starts if you're a new engineer and not a traveling engineer if you're a traveling engineer you already know what to do so that's what it is your individual you're an individual personal monitor for or rather personal engineer for each musician so each one will have a different conversation with you after the gig and before the gig acha listen mera aaj aawaz thoda kharab hai sambhal le hey man you know what my pickups giving me trouble so then you know exactly what to look for if you don't get their information if you don't share your problems or your happy happy moment like okay this is what i like you will never achieve that an unknown sound guy that's traveling with you he won't be able to deliver what he's expecting you'll be trying 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 and you're losing time so it's good to brief the tech team or the especially the engineer and the stage tech or the stage manager who's there and this is what i expect this is what i want normally it's already done through the rider and it's always done uh, pre arrival at the gear, at at the venue either the manager is talking or one of the band leaders will talk saying acha so and so is requirements here it's on it's available that's how it's done any more questions it's a case to case like there are times when all mics are running live on the fh there are times when you might find a need to mute of your mics because it's adding unnecessary frequencies to the mix so you either might turn it off or you might just pull it down on the fh um the practice to have a clean mix would be mute but uh, i personally don't always mute Uh, unused channels unless because what happens is like he was singing right now and probably the backing vocalists are there if i'm not aware of where the backing vocals come in and i mute that because the mic's down there it takes a split second and i might lose the first instance so rather than turning it off i might as well have it softer than the mix and then bring it up as i might need it if it's a problem area you have a small stage it's cramped and you know that with the mics being left on that it's being dialed in very hot in the mix on the on the monitoring the chances of feedback are very high because you don't probably you don't have uh, 31 band EQ so dial out the problem frequency so then yeah you you definitely can you must mute in that case but smart people would uh, be careful to see that If you are an engineer traveling regularly you will not have the problem you know exactly when to mute and not to mute or you may not mute at all because you already preset it that way but otherwise the good thing is to mute the only fear is that i might eh kya hai re the only fear is that i might lose a certain nuance that is very important in the song so that's the important part of being careful anything else change the cable bhai ye sonata acha nahi lag raha mujhe ya yeah. so uh, mainly i'm a vocalist and i play the guitar also wow and so mostly only me when i perform okay because i don't have a fit band so the thing is the guitar i can get it to my liking hmm It's your instrument. Yeah, so it's my instrument, and I know the main problem is the voice. When I'm like, if I'm singing without the mic right now, I want my voice to be exactly I'm sounding without the mic. But that does not happen. In some cases, I sound like a child. In some cases, I sound like a you know thirty-year-old. So it happens actually. I face it. Okay. So The smart the, the smartest thing to do would be is take your mic go to the front of the house or go to the console or at least in front of the PA 
dial in the stuff because if this is happening with you which means the engineer has no clue what he's doing he is sorry to say the sound wala no it's, it's a harsh fact i mean you, there are guys who have come to me and said man i am the guy i'm the system engineer you ask him to train, change a new queue on the system and he left uh -huh. the smartest thing they do with the system is locked i said okay fine get the guy who can unlock it for me i'll do it there is no cooperation so coming to your point walk to the console with your mic with a cordless mic if you're lucky if the if, if, if the cordless mic then okay you might need to go back and forth and get what you want that's one way of doing it the other way is hopefully see that you have good sound vendors some good sound vendors have good sound guys uh, today's generation of sound guys are a lot more sorted than back in the day where sound engineering as a profession was not known to anybody so yes when you still walk into a five star for an event and the engineer is called the sound wala so yeah but that's not going to change for many years to come tell him to cut the reverb out first in that case the the smart thing to do is theek hai main aata hu aapke paas walk to the guy ask him where the reverb return the turn it off turn it off he will give you grief he'll act like a jackass but if you want to sound good you need to tell him how you want to sound because he can't deliver that there are two ways you walk in there the guy sets you up you play you're comfortable you walk out he'll say fuck great or exactly as you said you be like i sound like a 30 year old or a 50 year old man or i sound like a child now that is only the only happens when uh, people are not sure of what they doing consoles can be intimidating so can sound because as we heard just now with her the mic fed back dangerously the biggest fear everybody has is feedback so because they have a fear of feedback they don't dial in hot signals because they're not sure ki main itna bada aayega to feedback aayega ki nahi aayega which means they've not set up in time not to check they have not done proper line checks they have not done system checks so they plug and play plug and play in some situations work in some situations don't work you are lucky you just guitar and voice same thing happens happens with dj's they will go to a venue and say man i it just doesn't sound nice yeah it it sound too bright some it dirty sound this sound rarely will hear them say it sound great same with musicians dj's are also musicians in a way as much as live musicians look down on dj's uh, and vice versa it's it's a battle that will go on forever and will never end but the point is each one is an artist in themselves if he or she is not comfortable in his shoes or in his in his home where he's supposed to perform he's not going to give us 100% at all or 100% at all my pleasure Uh, this has happened and it happens it will happen often it has happened often in the past now how do you deal with situation is called people management in my entire career i have seen this happen some deal or rather from stage the artist will say mera reverb bada na can you increase my reverb my hand hasn't reached the dial and he's already done this it hasn't reached the dial i've just done this he does this so basically what it means that what he is or she is hearing on stage is not exactly what he should be hearing he has assumed that i can hear well and has walked away during the performance is exactly where you look like a fool as a sound guy and so does a performer because when something like this happened people look at the sound guy mistake is there but no sound guy is mistake so that's the whole trick how do you get it right be sure of exactly what sound you want as i was telling him with with voice and with drums be sure exactly what you want i want you sure of your own sound it doesn't matter where you play how you play if your guitar stops playing or guitar string breaks you will find a way to continue playing that's when you're sure about yourself and your gear same thing goes with studios i mean you can walk into a studio but if you are walking in with a bad guitar pick up but at home i played it was fine did you plug it in and play we were playing it acoustic it happens so often hey, but i played at home it sounded perfectly fine did you plug it in and play no 
so that means you've not done your homework in checking it could also it could also be a bad battery or low battery it could also be that the pickup alignment is wrong there are situations in in bass players with the pickup uh, you're getting like a 60 and 80 hertz boost of 14 db because the pickup is misaligned it's not flat it's misaligned now people that want that sound will walk up to you first and say listen this is what i have done when i get that information i know exactly what not to do so i know where my gain structure should reach because he's already told me okay then i know my frequency so and so on stage will be a problem my harmonics will be a problem my gain because he's done this in terms of the drums will be a problem it will create a problem with the floor tom so on and so forth then you know in your head okay theek hai expect this to happen if i'm not given the information i'm going to straight and cut then he's going to come and say are why i can't hear my bass i'm not getting the bass note what he's not saying is i'm not getting the subsonic bass that i need for my bass guitar that's another miscommunication people say bass bass hai below 80 is is not bass it's sub it's it's, it's a sub bass subsonics b correct in your translation of information sharing information if you say i want 2 dis and you ask the justification give a justification because sometimes you might run a parallel line one running into your effects other running dry people do that i'm not saying no but be clear about your communication what you need to be done because you want it that way there are situations where you will have vocals running parallel okay he might be he might or might not have a processor and i as an engineer will say no i want a line separate he and i will get into an argument about why he doesn't want to give me separate we sit down have a five minute discussion he agrees and we get it when you do a y split you have 3 db drop you can choose to compensate or not the call is yours that's if you know exactly like a lot of times if there are guitar players they'll probably realize what i'm saying a lot of times you have guitar players who will walk up to you and say or playing and suddenly they are playing clean and they go to lead or it's too loud get your patches sorted before you land up on stage how do you do it the mistake we most people do is headphones i'm not saying don't use headphones that is the easiest way to do it on a co- without disturbing somebody else but if you have an amp take the time set it up you can save patches separately you don't want to tamper with the existing patch that you have you love it so much in the gain structure it is and the processing leave it save it as do a save as but see that you have that sorted if you don't somebody is going to come up to and say are tera lead mein suna nahi you did that nice little drum chop i didn't hear it because you played to the wrong sticks so on and so forth yes any more questions yes 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 and no Oh well see gate again is something that is subjective to personal taste from the point of view like proc- if i have the drummer and percussionist right next to each other i will use gates on most of all the mics or i mean not depending on the style if I, if it's jazz i will use gates all throughout or it's or it's even fusion i will use gates if it's metal i will think twice of using gates because sometimes it may not work so it's what music you're using proximity of instrumentation proximity of microphones what kind of microphones you're using uh there is a there is a school of thought where they say that uh, you should never eq the parallel you should never compress but the whole world does both so gate is something that helps you you can also daisy chain it you can side chain it depending on how you want to use it uh, there is no uh, golden rule saying that this should not be done what are rules meant for or made for to be broken in certain situations you can break the rules when you know your basics inside out if you don't know your basics listen to somebody who's advising you because he or she may or may not be right in his perspective for example you walk into a venue as an engineer and the guy says listen the problem frequencies are this bandwidth and this bandwidth And if I as an engineer have walked in and I don't pay attention to what the house engineer has to say, I'm going to have problems in those areas. So in that situation, if it's a solo instrument, like just him playing guitar and voice, 
I may not need the gate at all. But if he's got a percussionist or he's got, uh, he's playing percussion instruments on another microphone and I don't want that microphone to pick up what was what, his voice and the guitar, I might choose to use a very tight gate. The counter danger is that if he decides to play away from the microphone, it's never going to pick up. So setting the gate becomes another challenge altogether. So there is no golden rule that I have to use gate and I don't have to use gate. Gate is very helpful when you're using uh, slow and fast passages, depending on how you set it. There are lots of com uh, permutation combinations where you can run these things through and from. Uh, the prin basic principle of, of it being, because it's all about physics at the end of the day. What is sound? It's about physics and dynamics of the person, the instrument, the mode of the person, the temperature. You shut the AC over you and ask him to play drums and guitar. He'll play for 10 minutes. After that, he'll say, either give me a fan, we'll take a break. So environment you play in also. At the same time, you might have a situation where you're playing in the hot sun. You're having a blast. You don't give a damn of sweating. You'll continue playing because you're having fun. So you need to enjoy your stuff and, and, and entertain your audience as well. If you do that, you're home. Yes, I have. That's because the conversation happens before sound check. So he tells you that, he's that these are the things he's going to do. So I'm prepared for it. He'll tell me which song he's doing it. As an audience, it's it's an impromptu thing for you. For me, I know I may not know which whether he's doing it in the first part of the song or the last part of the song. You say, okay, this is expect this in this song. I am going to crank my gains in this, so on and so forth. I'm going to do additional sampling. So these are, like if you work with an engineer, this is what I mean by saying, talk to the engineer. Let the engineer, don't throw surprises. Because for a, you are playing a soft patch and there's a distortion patch in it that is in your pedal, you put it on. Chances are that I'm going to wonder what's wrong with the line. Because a pickup can go bad, a cable can go bad, a DI can go bad. So conversations need to be shared, plans of show flow need to be shared with the production and manager as well as the engineer. How do you manage with what I did with Chiron Funk? It was very simple. Uh, Monica and Randolph had a conversation. This is what our sound is. I remember the first time I mixed for them, well, this is what our sound is. I said a very simple thing. They told me, okay, drums can't be too loud. So, okay, fair enough. I said, when you're ready with sound check, we're done basic. You step out and hear, and you like it, you don't. I'll then accordingly alter it. There was back and forth, back and forth. Then there was another discussion about how certain parts need to have delays and how he's running some delays from his uh, module while he wanted different delays that counter those delays. These are all pre-planned. And if I'm not told these things, see that's the important part where the engineer travels with the band. So then you eliminate these wasted conversations with people that you don't travel with or you, you land up at a venue and if an engineer falls sick, my engineer falls sick and I land up then I have to inform or I'm controlling everything from a musician. I set up the balance as he says, I'm not happy with my voice. I set up the way I want my sound to be. And I tell the engineer, just leave it, don't touch it. Because I don't have faith in the engineer. So I run everything myself. In so like in, in uh, Shire's case, you can't really, I mean, she's, play, she's singing live. So it's not that any vocals are playing. Maybe a couple of harmonies are playing from the tracks. Otherwise, it's just all live. All those effects need to be run. If I haven't heard their songs before, I can't reproduce it. The audience there is going to look at me like, he doesn't know their songs. So I'm not going to, as an, as an audience, I'm not going to have a good time because I, I remember the song and it didn't reproduce the same way. Coming back to, can we reproduce the same thing? Yes, we can. There are ways and procedures in how you do it. It's either run live or recreated live. Today you get equipment that can be run separately for studio and separately for live. You get the same equipment that has two different modes. You run it in studio mode, it has a different gain structure and a whole different processing that runs through it. Use it in live mode, you can use it in live mode. That's the thing. Difficult, but not impossible. Anything else? Yes.
in what aspect in what perspective uh, internationally it's always run three way no you what you're saying is you want to run the subs on a separate ox yeah. i do that in all my shows unless it's a console that doesn't have that many outputs for auxiliaries then i will find a way to either reduce my auxiliary sense so that i can accommodate that sub or then i have to do the worst thing is start doubling the eqs and then run eqs live sometimes when you don't want when you have no option but you're running everything through a single master fader without the auxiliary send you're actually running uh, eqs live you're running compressions live that's something not always you want to do because the dynamics is something that you don't want to tamper with as a standard norm any live event will always have subs run on a separate ox it gives you better control in the room like here it's not the case you change that as an auxiliary send over here the response to the room will change for the subs by itself so yes it's a, it's always advised to do that the another thing I'll, i'll make a note engineers that come from studio that do live as well i'm one of them uh, but i started live way back then and then i got into studio uh, they'll always first question is the system running on the master is the subs running separate you say yes the first thing they'll say i want everything running on the master sometimes you reason out and make sense of them as you do it the way you always do it the way the engineer wants it because he needs to be comfortable the band needs to be comfortable and so on and so forth in that situation some venues will not give you a problem some venues will have wonderful decay times at variable frequencies which you can and can't control uh, who had ever the, the allen parson project any of you all had the luck of actually viewing that or seeing that concert the allen parson concert this was in 2013 i think at the mahbub studio where the mind of blues festival happens it was the first time ever that people called me and said that i have not seen that concert i it sad i missed it but in that concert it was the first time ever that they had acoustically treated the mind of blues stage which is mahbub studio people walked out saying we've never heard this venue sound so great after that all the mahindra blues festivals there after have acoustic treatments done before that it was just plain black cloths and you had re- you had room resonances somebody that has been for a 2011 concert and who's been for the last year will actually hear that difference it happened after the allen parson concert where event organizers were made to believe that if you do this the sound will be better because it's such a big room you cannot it is not, it's it's a shooting floor it's not Yeah, it's a shooting stage, so it's not built for sound. So you need to treat it. That's why you play acoustics of a studio. You will walk and you take the same djembe or guitar. You record in one room, and the next room it will not not sound the same. Treatments of room change depending on sizes, depending on how people want or how the brief is when you're building up building a studio. the room responses you have some people want 10% live some people want 30% live there are certain then you have complete dead so you'll see some studios like yashraj has multiple options to run the studio in different formats some studios if you see they'll have a panel that actually has a reflective surface and you turn it around it's just cloth so it's not reflective if you're like you can record drums and have it as live or as dead as possible that's where room acoustics play have a huge play like here uh, you move the drum kit from there to here it sounds different you the monitor if somebody obviously who have sung over here you if you're listening to the monitor here you flip it around without changing anything your perception will be completely different about your hearing because this acoustic here and the acoustic there is two different worlds plus it's an amphitheater setup so what you're hearing over there is different from what you're hearing over here the biggest fear is a uh, slap back you can't do much you the one way i would do is figure out the cal- de- calculate the slap back time you have uh, on your ipad you have enough apps that allow you to do that you have rtm meters you have smart live that let you do that 
figure that out. If you don't have anything, just clock it on your watch. Then, in, in situations where you have slap back problems, you will realize one thing. You cannot do, no matter what processing you do, it cannot be heard because slap back is overpowering it. And once you know the slap back decay time and the return, you can then work your processing around that. So you actually hear the effect. It happened. There was one show in Pune I had done. 6,000 people. And it was a dome. Half a kilometer long. Convention hall. The decay time, the slap back was, came back to me after two and a half seconds. Decay time to forget it. There are variable ways, once you know the limitation of your system, once you know the, the, the power you have uh, on the amp stage and the dynamics once the sound check is done, you will know what the maximum threshold you can push and not push without distorting. Then you use the venue to your advantage. Like uh, another thing in this venue itself, uh, if you run a track which we'll do, he can play you a song, he'll play it to you with EQ and without EQ. We can do that right now, and you'll see the difference. Shrey, any questions? Anybody else? Yes. Sometimes it depends on what amplifier is using. If he's, it could be a thing that he's used a different gauge of cable. Then he would do that. He would. No, just because you hit invert or using an invert phase, the frequency need not cancel. Uh, the first thing you'll always do in setting up a PA, you'll check your you'll check your phase alignment. The most important thing for all your boxes. That's the reason why a system engineer is required. Today you have line array systems that you can just plug and play, and that's taken care of with the DSP that's there inbuilt. But back in the day when you had multiple amplifier stacks and multiple routings, you had to check phase for every box. Otherwise, you will suddenly realize that the left stack is louder than the right stack. Because the engineer did not, or the, the guy who did the setup did not do phase checks. And then you're constantly tweaking, 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 and, and the guy who owns the system was like, it doesn't sound right. Because phase alignment wasn't done. It's the most important thing when you set up a PA. Anyway. Have you heard of an equilateral triangle? It's 60 degrees. Yeah. Ideally, that's the ideal. Uh, I mean, as an engineer, I need to be in a sweet spot, 60 degrees at uh, an angle from both L and R. Uh, sometimes the limitation is drastic, wherein as an FOH, I'm right next to stage. So that is 360. <laughs> So in certain environments, you have the advantage of being in the sweet spot. Certain you don't. Sometimes you'll be the left of stack, the right of stack. Sometimes you may be 10 feet away from the first stack, and you're like, oh, baba, maybe kaise sununga? Carry your plugs. <laughs> Very important. Protect your hearing. You, you lose your hearing, you're gone forever. And on that note, I think uh, if nobody has any more questions, and then I like to call it a wrap. Yes. Finally, one more question. Yeah, so uh, I have a proper condenser microphone and some case, and I have one of my friends who's a very good like uh, music producer. So like a normal acoustic recording, that's what we do. Like I record my guitar, that's like five minutes, like no extra noise is caused in that. But when I record my voice, then I see a lot of noise. Like we have tried different rooms, uh, like so editing it. But like, what's the best way or best software to use to do a proper that's a very really tough one to answer because there is any software you use is a good software to use. Any microphone you use is a good microphone to use. Uh, the room will always play a big impact on what you're doing. Probably what you're hearing is diaphragm distortion because your gain structure is too hot or the mic may be damaged. Because when you're playing an instrument, your gain structure is a lot lesser. I'm just assuming, I don't know. I'll need to actually sit down with you and figure out this. But the assumption is your voice projection versus an instrument projection is two different worlds. 
if I'm running the same gain structure on the instrument and then I'm same gain structure I'm using voice, I'm definitely going to get distortion. If you're saying you're getting in multiple rooms the same problem on voice, it's probably a problem with the mic. If it's not a problem with the mic, check your sound card. Is the only I need to sit with you and figure out exactly, or at least hear what the problem is. I can tell you what the problem is. But these are the probabilities to it. There is no, I mean, the prob the probably I'm assuming it's probably just a bad gain structure, as I said in the beginning. For your voice, you need to turn it down. What are you getting distortion? What are you getting? No, then, then that possibility is only one thing. Is running, you are running the mic. I mean, see, the, each microphone has a certain amount of uh, tolerance factor on the diaphragm. Maybe you need to use another microphone on your voice. Maybe it's not it, like some microphones can handle up to a 95, 105 decibels. There are some microphones that can handle up to 145 decibels of before you reach diaphragm distortion. That must be a problem with that particular microphone. If not that, check your cables. It could be a dry solder that's actually, you don't know, but the, the mic's moving or your, it could be that. No. Software, see, it's, it's, it's the software is very simple. Whatever I capture, the, uh, your mic is like your ear. In, as a human, I can eliminate certain sounds. As a mic, I don't have a brain. Depending on the pattern I use, it's going to pick up everything around. If I'm using an omni pattern, it'll pick up everything in the room and an extra which I don't need. Depending on what pattern you're using, is what the mic is going to respond to. What's your environment around? You record with your windows open? Well, it's always good to record in the studio. <laughs> Home recordings are good uh, to a certain extent. I'm not saying don't. It's good to put down ideas, but if you want... See, there's a simple analogy. If you have, say, you want to buy a sound card. Let's take that, since you're talking music and, and gear. What would be your budget? 40, 50 rupees? 1000. So, what is the. Uh, can you buy a uh, prism? How much does a prism cost? A prism 8 track costs 8.5 lakhs. In 40, 50, you probably get a duet. Yeah. You get a sapphire. Now, a prism versus sapphire, the dynamics make a big difference. Electronics have a huge difference, so on and so forth. Uh, we need to invest as much as we can in the right stuff for our needs. The mistake we make is, mere paas itna paisa hai, tum itna kaam karega. Tum utna hai result milega. Yes, as, as people are starting off, there's always a budget constraint. But even the smallest thing that started, that is today a huge phenomenon, started in a room. Somewhere as an idea. Sometimes that idea becomes a huge hit without much production money spent on it. Sometimes you need to put that money in. So, music has no perfect formula for success. Except, am I touching the person's soul? Am I getting your attention? If you have my attention, you have me as a fan. If you don't, somebody else has me as a fan. It's as simple as good. So get the sound card checked, get the cable checked. Well, I think I have enlightened a few of you all the similarities of how things are important. At, this, at your own end, yes, Thomas? Acha. Add your own end to be sure of what you need and where you want to go. And the sky is the limit. 
who's i mean anybody that has a particular engineer or a particular producer that you follow no you can say it louder aditya who's your favorite engineer producer he said it now answer which is the record he produced 10 years back american which is your favorite song in that or background score that's all it's less so yeah it's it's good to have idols it's good to have inspirations that take you places if not find one if we don't already have one find one it's a huge world out there with every i think every quarter there are at least four new genres of music coming up in some form or the other so open yourself to options and have fun sorry i just prepared a small little slide i don't know a few of my idols thank you that's it as a producer be accomplished somebody said analog digital it's analog or digital hell <laughs> never be afraid to trust your own instincts i'll keep playing you guys can read if you feel like thank you peoples miss that one <laughs> bill patnam was the man that invented consoles thank you <laughs>